Disability History, Panel 13, 1947 through 1957. Advocacy by parents leads to increased funding, better community services, and larger institutions. I shall tell you a great secret, my friend. Do not wait for the last judgment. It takes place every day. Albert Camus Responses to Disability Advocacy for improved institutions and better community services. Increased funding for research. Parents and professionals begin listening to people with disabilities. Medical Viewpoint In 1962, President Kennedy formed the President's Panel on Mental Retardation. At this time, the medical profession was considered the final authority on mental retardation and other disabilities. Consequently, the panel consisted primarily of medical professionals with an emphasis on prevention and treatment. Social Viewpoint The concept of normalization originated in Denmark in the late 1950s. It meant quite simply allowing persons who lived in institutions to enjoy a normal rhythm of the day. As Bent Nerje put it, making available to the mentally retarded patterns and conditions of everyday life which are as close as possible to the norms and patterns of mainstream society. Combined with the continuing stories of abuse and neglect in institutions, the normalization principle helped to convince people that individuals with disabilities belong in the community. Medical Viewpoint Because of the success of parent advocacy, many states poured money into building new and larger state institutions to meet the increasing demand for services. Between 1964 and 1968, $67,500,000 was allocated for new construction. New buildings were designed to take advantage of discoveries in medicine and operational efficiency. Social Viewpoint By the late 1960s, it was becoming increasingly clear that public institutions were failing to meet even the most basic human needs of the people they were intended to serve. Medical Viewpoint Institutions, professionals had determined, offered the most appropriate and efficient way to serve people. But the number of persons living in a single institution was still high, as many as 6,000 at Rome State School in New York. Staff to resident ratios were as high as 50 to 1. New facilities served to accommodate more individuals with developmental disabilities, but the medical model of treatment did not change. Social viewpoint. Gradually, the character of the parent movement changed as persons with disabilities, the primary consumers of disability services, assumed a more active role in fighting for their rights. Medical Viewpoint Niels Erk Bank Mikkelsen, the director of the Danish National Services for Mental Retardation, visited a state institution in California in the 1960s. His report was read across the country. Quote, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was worse than any institution I have ever seen in visits to a dozen foreign countries. In our country, we would not be allowed to treat cattle like that." Unquote. Social Viewpoint Originally intended as desegregation for students with disabilities, mainstreaming often meant dumping students with disabilities into public schools, putting them in regular classes with no supports, or isolating them in special, separate classes for most of the day. As a response to the empty promise of mainstreaming, Parents and activists began to call for integrated and inclusive schools, with students with disabilities participating in the same classroom as non-disabled students. Medical Viewpoint In 1965, Senator Robert Kennedy toured the Willowbrook State School in New York. Accompanied by a TV crew, he compared the conditions of the institution to that of a snake pit. The next year, Dr. Burton Blatt, and photographer Ferret Kaplan used a hidden camera to capture life inside of Brillo Brook. Their photographic essay, Christmas in Purgatory, was published in Life magazine, drawing the largest amount of reader response in the magazine's history. Dr. Blatt declared that there is hell on earth, and in America, 
there is a special inferno, the institution. Connection to different time in history. Beginning in the late 1960s and gaining momentum in the 70s and 80s, many parents were fighting along with their children for the closure of institutions and for better services in their communities.